What's up guys, it's Alex here. Today I'm excited to announce a new series of tutorials on how to make a SwiftUI app with core data. In this series we'll create a little bit more complex app that we did in the previous one with several views, several core data entities and a bunch of under the hood things. I think it will take a while, it will take us several videos for sure and of course it won't be completely ready to publish up, but I hope we'll learn something new. In this series, we'll use SwiftUI to create UI. We'll use Combine and the MVVM pattern and Core Data as our persistence layer. We won't cover unit or UI tests in this series, but it's always important and great thing to do. So try to cover as much of your code as possible. And if you find something difficult, feel free to let me know and I'll cover it in following videos or explain something in comments. So what we will do today? To make it more interesting, we won't dive into architecture, difficult business logic layers. We'll just simply create a main model for our app and core data and present it in a very simple way in a Swift UI view to make sure it works. As a result, by the end of this part, we'll have some kind of foundation for our app. And then we'll focus on creating main view, implementing basic actions in this view so we can understand what exactly we're going to make and develop our idea further. And with doing so, we'll add more logic, we'll dive more into some complex implementation and we'll see where it leads us to. Maybe in a real project it's not the best approach and it's better to have all logic uh, coded before starting creating UI layers or something. But I think in this case it's totally fine because we want to make our journey more enjoyable. So what is our idea? I'm sure everyone has tried to obtain a new habit or cute a bad one. In many times dedication consistency work and many of us may notice that after some magic number of days or weeks maybe 21 day period or 30 days whatever uh, after that period it gets easier to stick to your new habit or withstand desire to get back to the old one you wanted to get rid of so the app we will start making today will be about habits we'll make an app to track whether you stick to your goal you've decided to stick to or quit a bad habit. We'll record our progress each day and present some kind of statistics. Let's call it daily goals or any other name if you'd like to. Open your Xcode and choose a file, new, project. Choose a multi-platform, tab and select application. Then click next. Choose a product name, in our case it may be daily goals. Make sure you've selected use core data and host in a cloud kit. Actually, this is not important, but the important thing is to check use core data. If you want to cover your app with tests, make sure to enable this flag too. Now click next and choose a place where you'd like to store your, your project and then click create. So now we can see a project with, a, with one view with a persistence layer and three folders shared, iOS and macOS that divide our multi-platform app into a shared that is used for universal stuff and iOS and macOS for specific things related to these platforms. For now we'll focus on iOS part and then at some point we'll make sure that it works in macOS too. We will need to make some changes in the future because some things that we'll start making with iOS won't work in macOS, but it's another story and we'll get there. And now let's start by creating a core data model. To do that, open daily goals, uh, data model file and click add entity. Let's rename it to goal or even better to tl goal. I suggest we always use prefix for our apps and in this case it's like uh, a short from tutorial TNL or you can choose whatever you want here and if we have a prefix for each of our entities we can make sure that they won't interfere with some built-in Swift or SwiftUI features or some other new stuff that Apple will introduce in the future frameworks. So this goal will have an ID 
that will be UUI ID. Also it has an icon that will be string. Let's check it as non-optional and by default it will be just an empty string just for our convenience. Let's add a title as string that won't be optional too and will have an empty string. We we'll also have a position so we can reorder our goals that will be non-optional to edit on will be a date when this entity is created and yeah it will be non-optional and choose any default date from the past it doesn't matter much we'll make sure we will update it when we create an entity and I'm making them non-optional just for our convenience in the future. We'll create a modified one that will be a date when we last changed our day, uh, our entity. So we can keep track of it if we need to. And the latest thing is to add is removed flag that will be no by default so if we want to remove our goal we'll first mark it as is removed and we'll keep it in our database and maybe in 30 days we will get rid of it yeah also I would like to make this value non optional too just to make it easier to work with that to do that, we just need some default UID and to generate it, we can either open a Google or like in Google UID or open playground or just simply we can add it in somewhere in our app. For instance, we can just add temporary and init method here that will just print UID UID string here. Yeah, now let's build and run this app. The app is running and we just can copy this thing. We undo all these changes and go to the persistence layer uh, model and choose non optional and the default value set this value. Yeah, so now all our entities by default will have the same UID, which is bad, but at the same time it will be non-optional and we'll make sure that when, whenever we create a new entity, we'll set this ID to something new. Yeah, and now let's make another entity and we'll call it TL goal record. This entity will represent records for each day when we set our goal is completed so every time you tap that you've done this goal you'll add a record to TL goal record and this will be just a really simple one we'll just put date here that will be non optional too and also let's add a relationship to our goal and it will be till goal here. Yeah. It will be two one and the lit roll will be nullify. Now let's go to TL goal and create another relationship. We'll call it records. Destination will be TL gold. TL goal records or and the universe will be goal from our TL goal record. So now you can see that it is set up. And also this will be too many because it will be a set of records for our task. And delete rule will be cascade. So if we remove the TL goal, we'll remove all TL goal records too. Last thing, let's just get rid of this item here. We just don't need it in our app. Yeah, so for now, uh, we're done with this core data model. Let's go to persistence layer 
and for now just simply command this stuff here so we don't need it here and final thing is to go to content view and get rid of this stuff here and everything from here and yeah and actually we don't need this stuff here we don't need this formatter and let's just put hello world here just to make sure that our app builds great also i would like to make our swift files for our entities manually now they are generated but what i don't like in them that their properties will actually be optional and there might be other things so i would like to take care of these classes on my own so first thing to do will be to set it to manual or none and also let's check a module as current product model and do the same for our tl go record now we have to create new classes so let's create a new file that we'll call tl goal it will be in the share it and make sure that both targets are selected now let's import core data here and create our class tl goal that will be an as managed object it will have an as managed variables icon the string this will be title it will be string two next would be position enter 16 edit on as date modify it on as date as well is removed as boolean and records as a set of tl call record that will be optional yeah and also let's quickly add an extension that will store and fetch request for our TL goal We'll have just this removed as false. A request will have a sort descriptors with just one sort descriptor. It will be key path to till goal. position true and we'll return this request and also I believe we need to confirm our tl goal to identifiable 
so we can use it in our SwiftUI classes or SwiftUI views. And since we already have ID here, we don't need to add anything to this protocol. Yeah, just to make it more organized, we'll identifiable here as a mark. So we can see if our app grows by some reason, we'll see this mark here. Yeah. And now create a TL goal file. I mean TL goal record file. It will be a Swift file TL goal record. Let's import core data here and we'll implement our TL goal record file. I mean class here. This should be simple. I believe we have a date and a goal here. Yeah. So it will be mismanaged property. Mismanaged property date. And mismanaged property representing our relationship with goal. That is just still goal. Yeah. Also, let's just copy this from here to here and rename this stuff here. Now our model should be fine. Let's try to build it. Yeah, it's successful. Awesome. But before we go anywhere, let's populate our preview persistence controller with some base data so we can see how it looks like in our view, in our canvas. Because for now, just simply uh, hello world text. So let's create a new file persistence plus preview. Let's import core data here. We'll make it maybe a little bit dirty, but I think it's fine. Persistence controller. Let me check if we have any. Yeah, no, we're fine. Static function. Add preview data. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Before doing that, we'll need to create some function. Add goal. Icon will be string. Title will be string as well. Position would be integer 16. Uh, if it's completed today, it's Boolean. And let's pass a context here. Yeah, it may look a little bit dirty, but it's totally fine for our previews. So we'll use this context. Call ID will be UID. Icon goal position will be position. Play these things with date. Now we don't need it because it is false by default. Also, maybe we should create set of TL goal record. And we'll assign it to our goal. And it will be uh, for E in C 
Uh, so we'll add a like a goal record. Still goal record. For context, goal record date will be our date. Adding time interval. Time interval minus i multiplied by 86 400 this is how many seconds we have in a day one minute is 60 seconds one hour is 60 minutes and one day is 24 hours so in all it's 86 400 so we update it so it uh, making this date in the past so we'll add this record for today for yesterday and for several for seven days back records insert go record but actually uh, yeah let's let's change it a little bit uh, depending of uh, yeah let's let's just change it So first i will be either zero or one so if it is complete today it will be just a current date otherwise it will be previous date so depending on, on this we'll have different dates then we'll have seven and let's have a step as two so it will be every other day so we can build a statistics and see both days with and without uh, records and now let's basically just add some icons. We can simply open uh, notes and just populate it is our, with our icons. So yeah, we can add jogging, maybe laptop, books. Apple, maybe not. Yeah, to open this sheet, you just need to hold Ctrl and Command and press Space. In this case, you see that, and you can choose among these emojis. Yeah, and you can choose whatever you like. So now let's just copy all this stuff. Over here, let's add five goals here. project reading eat healthy and avoid sugar because we're trying to be really nice people we're really good people healthy let's say this maybe to false and this and uh, I think it's fine we didn't read yet, didn't work on our project, but we had a morning jogging today, we ate healthy and we didn't eat donuts today. Nice. Now let's open persistence file and just instead of all this stuff here, we'll just add preview data in our context. We'll save this context. For now, this is all this stuff is fine. Yeah. And Finally, uh, let's check if it builds. It does build. Let's go to our content view and maybe just quickly 
add a list of all this stuff. So create a fetch request. That will take our fetch request that we created. And this will be private variable goals that will be actually fetch results till goal. Yeah, and we don't need this stuff here. Or any of this. And even this. So let's create a list for rich goals. Go in. Let's for now just maybe create a text with goal title. resume and see what we'll see in the canvas. Click try again. Yeah, and to make our preview work, we also forgot to fix something. We need to go here and just get rid of this thing here. Otherwise, by some reason, uh, preview doesn't show to us yeah so let's try to build it it should be successful let's go to content view let's open a canvas pressing command option return and click resume or try again and yeah now you should see that great let's just quickly also add some additional info here so we'll add the goal icon and you know, let's add a spacer here. Cool. Now we see a list of our goals. So we have a preview data that we can use. So yeah. And just to point it out, we are going to use MVVM here, but we just can't put a fetch request inside of view model. So we are gonna use maybe kind of controversial approach but yeah we'll have a fetch request with goals inside of our view and the rest of the logic will be in view model and in a real app we would just test this fetch request that they work fine and after that we would just leave with this thing here yeah and we would test the view model and in general we still have testable code and go with this fetch request because yeah i really like how it works that is uh, that it updates our data dynamically and yeah it's really great so that's it for today we started our project with with swift ui and core data so congratulations and even though if we build and run the app it won't show any info and there is no logic here we've set a foundation for our future features and in the next part, we'll create a view with the view model for our list of goals, implement adding new goals on a tab. We'll continue making our code clean. We'll use dependency injection to make all the parts of our code testable and make sure we hide behind protocols as much as possible to encapsulate all the layers one from another. Yeah, I'll leave a link below for the complete code of the app and I see you in the next part.